tonight with another viewer request. Tonight I'm going to do a how-to video on how to tell if your tarantula is getting ready to molt. I get asked this all the time and it's an excellent question yet very hard to describe. I thought I would do a video on it so you all can understand. Obviously this varies quite a lot from species to species. I have many specimens to show you and I'm still available for questions at any time. Let's take a look. I wanted to start off by showing you this beautiful Acanthoscuria geniculata. Okay, okay. Making fun of me does not put me in a good mood. Okay, okay. I'm gonna make you barf again. <laughs> tarantula molting 101. Best way to know if your tarantula is gonna molt? Just to see a fresh molt and you'll know oh okay that's an animal that was preparing to molt this is a wonderful giant well not giant yet but getting there Acanthoscuria geniculata and I know this animal molted because she has a giant exoskeleton laying next to her now I'm gonna show you some old world without urticating hairs let's take a look at this Tarina chylus cordatus this animal does not have urticating hairs, which is a clear symbol, I think, often to tell if your animal's closer to a molt. But you can see how fat, tall, and circular this animal's abdomen is. It appears to be improportionate to the body, in my opinion. Let me show you one which molted more recently. Now this animal you can see is has a much narrower abdomen and it's much more proportional to the body. It's not thin but it's not really big and fat and engorged looking. I know it's kind of crumpled up but you can still see that the abdomen in comparison to the cephalothorax is more proportional and it is less rounded. That is a way to get an indication in some of your old worlds that they are approaching a molt. One way to tell is by the volume of the abdomen, basically how dense it is, the shape, and basically how big and fat it is. Now just because it's pretty, I had to show you this beautiful Brachypelma vegans just because it had molted not too long ago and she's just so pretty. And you can see her abdomen is smaller and it's nice and full and she has not lost any urticating hairs yet. You can see that she is more freshly molted. Here's an example of an Avicularia versicolor who is getting closer to a molt although she still has a full rump of hairs. They don't always kick hairs and sometimes the more docile species in particular will keep a fully haired if you will and still can be close to a molt. Here is an avicularia versicolor who molted more recently and notice the abdomen is thinner, smaller the color is also much more brilliant, whereas in an animal that's getting closer to molt, they tend to kind of dull out. Note, the size of this animal's abdomen is much smaller in proportion to its cephalothorax, and you cannot see the striping on the abdomen through the hairs like you did on the other one because it's newer and more hairy. Now let me show you a sling getting ready to molt. Here is a younger Avicularia versicolor, and you can see how fat this little baby is, and how giant the abdomen is compared to the upper part of the body, the cephalothorax. You can see how pronounced the barring is on the abdomen, and it's even starting to get a little shine to it, which occurs when the exoskeleton is pulled very taut and you can tell that they are getting ready to burst out of it and present their new pretty skeleton for all the world to see. Now I will be showing you finally three Brachypelma smithi that are fairly close to the same age that are post near a molt and very close to a molt. This first little one 
is a 2013 baby and this one recently molted you can see the abdomen is nice and slender although it's not too thin and it has a nice rump of hair this one you can see has picked off all the hairs in its urticating patch and is starting to get nice and fat and shiny yet is still brown which indicates it's not quite ready to molt although it's getting close this animal on the other hand is nice and fat but jet black which is the color that Smith Eye turn right before they molt and although to the untrained eye the previous animal might be closer to a molt actually this one is. I get asked very often how often an animal molts. A sling growing up will molt as often as once a month. In adulthood an animal might molt once or twice a year or even every few years. It depends on how much they're eating and how fast they're growing. Although a faster growing species will sometimes emerge from a molt twice as large as they were before they molted to where others Smith eye, for example, when they come out might be 25% larger. It's really interesting. It is different from species to species. I hope this just didn't make more questions for you guys. I hope it gave you a little bit of insight and through your tarantula know-how. Of course, questions, comments, leave them below. Don't forget to like if you like this video so I can make some more how-tos. This video was sponsored by the Texas Reptile Expos and Bonnie Berry bringing education to the whole world. Hope you guys like this one. I'll see you later.